Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for this year's first Richland Gives webinar for our 2023 event. Um, if you all can just type into the chat your name and the organization you're representing today, we're going to give it a couple more, maybe another minute to let more participants join us and then we'll get started. Well, awesome. I love seeing all the organizations coming in. Um, so again, welcome to our first Richland Goes webinar all about building your campaign. Um, we're going to focus a lot on filling out your organization profile. Um, and uh, without further ado, we will get started. Um, so I am Sarah. I'm, I'm a project manager with Mighty Cause and I help uh, Maura run uh, Richland Goes. Um, and we, are, we really value our partnership with the Richland County Foundation. Um, and so I will pass it over to Mara to say hello. Well, good afternoon and thank you, Sarah. Sarah does help us with everything involved with Richland Gives. So I thank her for all of her hard work. And I thank you for registering for Richland Gives and for this webinar. We had a record number registered today. So I'm excited about that. And just as a reminder, uh, all nonprofits must register each year for Richland Gives, which I believe most of you have done. And I actually saw some of you out at Ohio State University's Community Engagement Fair this afternoon and chatted with a few of you. So thank you for turning that around on a tight uh, time schedule to make it for this webinar this afternoon. I would also like to thank the generous donors at the foundation. This year, again, we will be offering $80,000 in grant prize incentives. We are going to keep the prizes very similar to last year. So last year, we had the big changeover where we now have three categories for the leaderboard. Those categories are small nonprofit, medium, and large. And this is based on your operating budget. So when you filled out that form at the beginning to register, it's very important that you accurately uh, give us the number of your operating budget. And that goes for the prizes. So this is the ninth year for Richland Gives, which the foundation hosts. We do this as a way to build capacity, uh, to grow philanthropy, and of course, to make our community stronger through the work that you do at your individual nonprofits. So it will take all of our enthusiasm and energy and effort to make this the best Richland Gives ever. Uh, you know, each year we raise a lot of money together. So I'm looking forward uh, to another successful Richland Gives. So thank you. And I turn it back over to Sarah. Awesome. Um, so this webinar is going to be recorded just so you all are aware. Um, and it'll be uploaded into the toolkit on the Richland Gives website, along with the slides so that you can, <clears throat> excuse me, reference them. Or if you have to dip out early, you can come back um, and rewatch any segment. Uh, all right, let's get started. Um, so again, our agenda, we're gonna kind of cover the basics. I'll have Mara cover that. Um, and why I spelled registering wrong. But basically we're gonna go through how to register and access your page. Um, we'll talk kind of more in depth about how to accurately and effectively tell your story to attract donors during the event. Um, we'll cover kind of briefly a different tools and features that are available, a couple new sections on your story pages as well. Um, and then we'll hit on all of the resources and support and follow up with Q&A. So if you do have questions, you can click the Q&A button on your screen. Um, Mara is gonna be helping kind of facilitate those. Uh, so feel free to send them over. 
So I'll pass it back over. Okay. So you see the dates on uh, for Richland Gives. And someone asked me today about the early giving period. So the early giving starts two weeks prior to uh, Giving Tuesday, which this year will be November 28th. We do offer early giving prizes. So it's important that you start uh, communication with your donors a couple months in advance, but especially uh, November 13th when the early giving uh, begins. So pay attention to that. And the other thing, Sarah, when people are new to Richland Gives, uh, could you describe the emails they receive and how they are actually going to log in uh, to their page and begin their page? I know that's later in your slides, but I believe that they receive an email from you. Is that correct? Yes. So when you register, you'll get kind of an automatic email that says that we've received your submission form and it's in review. Um, when we approve you, you'll also get an automatic approval email with next steps that you can take to start filling out your profile um, or refreshing the content on your page. Um, and then if you are brand new and you're filling out the form, you'll still get those emails, but you'll also get notified once our support team um, adds you as a, an approved e admin of your organization page. So. Mighty Cause Support handles admin approvals because um, everyone who is added to an organization has access to sensitive donor information. So we just do a quick scan, make sure you know whoever's being added should be added, um, and then you'll get an auto email notifying you of that as well. And that's all I wanted to cover. Thank you. Um, alrighty, so some giving day goals as you're starting to kind of get registered and setting up your profile. Um, so in general, giving days are a really wonderful opportunity for organizations to raise funds within a short time frame. Um, this short time frame creates uh, momentum during the day and encourages donors to give at specific times, trying to help you win prizes. Um, it's also a great time to just come together with nonprofits locally in the area. So that you all are raising awareness of your missions and your works um, and just collectively raising money uh, for the community. Um, it's also a wonderful opportunity for you to consider engaging sponsors or new community partners. If you, you know, have not previously dabbled in the world of sponsorships, this is a great talking point um, to try to get some sponsors, some matching grants set up, um, or even just engage your community to set up peer to peer fundraisers to help you, you know, spread your awareness of your mission and secure new donors um, through their networks. So kind of some different goals to keep in mind. Um, and we'll do more intensive kind of campaign strategy in our next webinar. Um, but this is something to keep at the forefront as you start developing your pages, when you start thinking about what information you want to put on your profile, um, how does it relate to your giving day goals, uh, and starting to think about what you want to fundraise money for. So first things first, um, you will need to register in order to participate in Richland Gives. Um, so the register registration form is fairly straightforward, no fee to participate. It is required each year. So even if you have previously participated for the last, you know, what is it, nine years you said, um, you will still need to participate uh, and register uh, so that we can collect that information and make sure you're put on the appropriate leaderboard. Um, so if short form on the site, you click register, it'll bring up this little form um, and you can search for your organization or your EIN. Um, if you're logged in, um, it'll prompt you to log in. But if you are logged in and you search your organization, it should come down in your list, just like I have Mighty Cause because I'm a part of Mighty Cause. Um, if you don't see your name, your organization or you're having troubles, you can always reach out to our support team at support at mightycause.com. Um, but there's also it's a very intuitive form so and it also offers you the option to create a page if you're brand new and nothing is coming up um and because it is an all-in-one form you can also by filling out the form you also ask for admin access if you are brand new and you're not an admin of your organization page yet um if you have logged in and you have admin access and you are sure you're not sure if somebody registered yet if you go to your overview screen um on your organization page on the left dashboard you'll be able to see your log your your um, registration status so it'll say either registration for richland gives is open registration is pending um or if you're approved it'll say you're approved as well 
Um, you'll also see yourself start to show up in the registration, um, sorry, in the search for the event. So that's another way you can check to make sure you're registering. Um, but you will want to be registered and approved to participate by October 31st. Um, once you're registered, you can access your organization page by just logging in through the Richland Gives website. At the top right corner, there's a button to log in. You can log in using Google, Facebook, or the email address that's attached to your profile. Um, once you're logged in, you can also see at your name, there'll be a drop down menu and it'll show the organization and you can click that and that's how you access your page. Um, like I said, if you're a new nonprofit or just a new admin, you're able to request admin access through your organization profile while filling out the registration form. It's kind of all in one. Um, so it's an automatic request built into the form. And then our Mighty Cause support team is going to go through and review your admin request. I would say it takes between two and three business days. Um, if you haven't heard back since, you know, for a while, you can always reach out. Um, we can follow up. <clears throat> um, but you will receive an email automatically notifying you once you've been approved. Um, so then you can go ahead and log in. Um, once you're logged in, you will see a navigation menu on your left hand side once you click your organization profile. Um, and these are kind of the highlights of what you will be able to access. So you'll have your overview where it shows, <clears throat> excuse me, your to do list. Um, these are, you know, not technically required, but these are highly recommended items that you, need, you really should complete so that you have a more complete profile so a donor can visit, um, so a donor can be thanked when they give to you uh, and find out more about your organization. Empty pages, you know, no logos, no banners, not refreshed content, content on the page that might say, you know, 2021 or 2022 um, is not going to resonate well with a donor and so you don't want to miss out on capturing those donors you want to make sure that you update your profile add refreshed photos videos anything that is going to help tell your story um and telling your story is going to happen on your organization page so if you click that button you'll be able to customize fundraising tools is going to house all of your fundraising um kind of tools so your campaigns your peer-to-peer -peer pages if you have a matching grant you need to set up um widgets and things like that Reporting is where you're going to access all of your donor data, including your retention reports. So if you previously participated, pulling your retention report is going to be something you want to add to your schedule. Um, this report is going to show donors that gave to your campaign previously who have not given this year. Um, you can customize your checkout flow. So that means, you know, setting up your thank you page, customizing different levels in the donation form. We'll get more into each of these. Um, and then settings as well. So if you are an admin, but you know additional admins need access to you know, the campaign page, you can always go in and you can add admins as well. Um, that's where you can also set up for direct deposit, EFT, um, or check any other settings that you need to. Um, so this year, we're really gonna talk more about telling your story um, and what that looks like. Your organization page has a lot of wonderful um, capabilities here to really customize. Um, so you'll want to start by toggling on edit mode and start customizing the look and feel of your profile. So that means, you know, setting up um, the logo for your page or the image that you need, um, your banner image, what kind of pictures are really going to tell the story. Um, you can also customize the color on your page. So this, you can see the theme color is a bright blue. So you can do this by clicking the little kind of paint icon um, and so you can pick any color that you want for your buttons and your timeline, um, your thermometer to show, which is really fun. Um, you can also choose images from a built in gallery. If you need a background image, but you just aren't finding one that works, you can select from a pre created image. Um, but basically this organization page is going to be the main link that you share with your supporters outside of your donate link. Um, and there's also a fundraise button. Some people choose to toggle this on um, if they are going to be having peer to peer fundraising efforts. Some organizations choose to hide it so you can decide uh, here. I would recommend keeping it on. Um, that way you can kind of attract people to peer to peer fundraise for you. They would click this fundraise button link and then they would be able to create a page to campaign for you. Um, but this is a really great example of what a completed profile looks like. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about why and how it influences a donor's decision to give. 
Um, a complete profile is going to have, you know, a logo. This is what also is going to show up next to your organization name on the leaderboards um, and a really nice clear picture for a banner um, that ideally kind of reflects the work that you do. Um, people really love, I mean, obviously they love pets, but they also love people. People love to see other uh, people. Um, so kind of having images that show the work that you do with people and uh, the effect that you have on the community is going to really resonate really well with people. Um, having a mix of images and text and headlines uh, is also going to help break up the information so that when a donor visit your page, they can see, uh, you know, they can quickly kind of glance through and see like, oh, what's the mission? What's your history? What are you fundraising for? Make sure you clarify where the funds are going to be going during your campaign. Um, and another thing that I think more organizations should take advantage of is the custom tab on your profile. So you have a built in about page. This one can't be changed for your second tab. You can customize so you could, you know, have it have your about be all about your organization and you could have your tab be all about, you know, your Richland gives kind of giving Tuesday. Where are your funds going? What's your goals? Um, some people have like a projects that they are fundraising for so you can have this say like campaign goals or projects and then you can itemize where the funds are going uh, but i would definitely take advantage of this because donors can toggle back and forth so it's just another area for you to add additional information to to try to help tell your story uh, which is definitely going to help influence a donor's decision to give the more filled out your profile is the more um you know information you have, the more visuals you have. It's more enticing to a donor. They feel more connected to your organization. They can clearly see what you're fundraising for and the impact that their funds are going to have on you, um, which is going to help them decide to give. So as you scroll down, you can feature campaigns. Um, you can see that these colors reflect the brand colors that you've picked. So then in this case, it's kind of that lime green. Um, and then you can also opt for media gallery as well. So you can connect social galleries um, like Facebook and stuff like that. Um, but when considering telling your story, things to think about uh, and the information that you wanna share with a donor is going to be what is your goals? Um, why should someone support you? So you want to make sure you answer these questions very quickly at the top of your page um, we have an inline text editor to help you with formatting so you can, you know, bold things, change colors, highlight things that are important. Um, you know, these little adorable animals at the Animal and Humane uh, Society. Obviously, people love seeing the work that you do. So whatever that looks like, adding some photos is going to really carry weight when a donor is deciding to give. Um, adding that custom tab. In this case, they've added a staff tab um, to highlight their staff, but you can use that tab to highlight project areas. Testimonials are a really good one. So if you have a couple, you know, people who you have influenced with your work, asking them to write, you know, I don't know, a short paragraph about the impact that your work has had on them, that also is a really great use of the tab. Uh, but overall, just trying to figure out how to clearly convey your organization's mission and what you're fundraising for is really going to go far for donors. Um, a couple new sections that we're excited to share with you. Um, so, well, featured campaigns isn't new. This one's new. I'll get to that in a minute. But featured campaigns, these are optional sections that you can enable on your profile page. So featured campaigns are going to highlight specific fundraisers that have been put together. So, you know, for instance, if your board has decided to create a fundraising page, you can highlight that. Um, so you can kind of decide if you even want to enable this, you don't have to. Um, giving activity is the new one that we're very excited to share. We got a lot of feedback from organizations saying that they would love to have a donor wall um, where donors can be called out and just thanked publicly. Um, so this donor wall is going to honor whatever the donor has opted for as far as anonymity settings in the checkout process. So if they want their name to be anonymous, it'll say anonymous. If they want their amount to be anonymous, it'll say their amount is anonymous. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but you can optionally enable this uh, midway down your page. Um, and then we also have um, a new programs section, which we're excited to share with you all. Uh, at the very bottom of your page, there's an organization data. 
There's a tab now that says programs. Um, this is an additional opportunity for you to continue sharing the work that you do throughout the year. Um, so you can highlight specific programs uh, like socialization programs if you work with animals type of things. So whatever information you want to add here to help continue telling your organization story is going to be a good idea. Uh, very easy to set up. There's a little plus sign, click programs, and then you can add the details, add a cover image, a title, you can describe uh, the program and then the impact that it has. Uh, you can also add an approximate budget so that donors, when they see the program, they can kind of get an idea of what it takes to run and operate this program. Um, and so a couple other platform features and tools. So when you have you know, figured out how you want your organization page to look, it'll be time to start working through your other to-do list items. So that's working on your checkout flow. Um, so your checkout flow is going to allow you to customize donation levels. So if you have not previously done this, I highly recommend it. Um, this is just a very impactful way to show donors, again, what it takes, the resources, the money it takes to operate uh your organization so whether that's forty dollars for dog food or transporting rescue dogs or growing a garden or you know transporting meals to people in need whatever those values look like make sure you add them in here we always recommend um, writing a brief description with the amount uh, that you are suggesting um, so we recommend between four to six options um, to be customized and i will also recommend um, asking for also small amounts, you know, they don't have to start at $40. Um, you can start, you know, at $10 um, so people can understand because, you know, $10 gifts are also going to go far. Um, so giving people different kind of budget tier options while also adding descriptions is really helpful. Um, and just overall reinforcing like the impact that the donor is going to have. Oftentimes, you know, donors don't always know specifically how much they want to give. Some do, some come showing, knowing exactly what they want to give. Maybe they gave the same year over year. But this is also an opportunity to try to capture donors to give in larger gift amounts um, or do a monthly recurring gift, uh, which is an option as well. Um, but if somebody is coming and doesn't know how much to give and they think, oh, well, maybe, you know, $10 would be great. And then they see, oh, if I could donate 30, I can do this. That sounds fabulous. I'm going to do that. So you can really capture, you know, higher donor gift levels by explaining what the funds go to. Um, and then you can also preview out your checkout form and your donation receipt. You can add a little custom thank you message. Um, you can customize your thank you page as well. Thank you page is going to have um, whatever information you need. So you can add a photo, you can have a picture of your staff saying thank you. Um, it's a nice little way to thank the donor immediately after donating. So this is the screen that will pop up after a donor clicks donate and completes their gift. So you'll definitely want to add something so that they can see something um, acknowledging that they have given. Um, so this is what I was talking about for post checkout. This is the screen that pops up uh, saying thank you for donating and then here's a message from the organization. So definitely make sure you add something here. Um, you obviously don't need to create a whole video unless you want to, uh, but just even saying thank you and then maybe linking to, you know, a newsletter sign up so that you can capture those donors as well uh, is something that you should consider. Um, matching grants are, we're going to talk more about at our next webinar, um, but I do want to highlight it in case you have never worked with matching grants. Um, matching grants are a great way to encourage donors to give at a specific time. Um, essentially, you're leveraging a large gift to bring in additional gifts. So, for instance, if you have a donor who gives, you know, every year $500, say, for instance, um, you can talk to that donor and you can say, hey, would you consider, you know, offering this up as a match this year instead? Um, and then you can work with the donor to come up with the terms um, and kind of work through all of those settings. So you can find this under fundraising tools, matching grants. Um, but basically, 
you can choose how you want it to set up to most often it is a one to one match so when somebody donates $20 they get matched $20. Um, but what's great is that this is a really wonderful marketing opportunity for organizations, so if you secure a match, this is a great thing to build into your campaign communications letting donors know hey on you know Richland gives at 2pm we're going to have a match, so you can take your gift even further by donating during that hour. Um, so something to consider as well. Ideally, you're also leveraging these matches during either slow periods of your campaign, maybe around, you know, dinner time when things are slowing down, because this will give you something to give you a little boost during that time. Um, or you can leverage them so that they take place during prizes, prize hours, so that you can try to drum up a bunch of uh, gifts to try to help you secure a prize. Um, but once you have a match set up and it's ready, you'll have a little sticker showing the donor that a match is live. Um, and it'll also be searchable on the Richland Gives event within the search. Um, a lot of donors, they like to see how far their money can go. So they're willing to go to the search to see which organizations have live matches. So it's also searchable there. Um, peer to peer campaigns are really um, another wonderful opportunity. So those are found under your fundraising tools. Uh, if you click campaigns, you'll be able to see a list itemizing every single campaign that has been created for your organization, both by admins and also by um, ambassadors or peer to peer supporters. Um, you can see how much they've raised, you can see when they were last updated. Uh, if you go through here, it's a good idea to also hide any out of date campaigns that are no longer being used. Um, ideally, all the campaigns that are showing up in the search are ones that are active. So if you know a couple of these are out of date, you can click the little three dots next to it. And you can toggle discoverability. Um, that way, you know, donors don't get lost in campaigns that are no longer active. Um, another highlight fundraiser templates. If you have not created a fundraiser template and you are encouraging people to fundraise for you this year, definitely, definitely get this set up. Um, you're able to set up one template and you can basically pre fill a bunch of the peer to peer fundraiser uh, page for a supporter, so you can add a title if you want consistency say all your board members are. Um, or you want every page to have consistent naming you can kind of pre format it so that when somebody clicks the fundraise button. They get prompted uh, to use the template and then they can just fill in the missing gaps, so you can add a fundraising goal for them. You can add an image if you want your logo featured. Oops. Um, so definitely take time to create a fundraiser template. Really, this just makes it easier for peer to peer supporters to not be terrified of a blank page. Um, sometimes it's hard for people to get started on pages. So adding content makes it less intimidating. Um, so you can pre fill a bunch of that for them and then once they see content on the page, they are welcome to adjust so if they're like oh $500 is too much for my goal, I want it to be 200 then they can do that they can adjust anything on here and they can also add additional text. They can add you know their own testimonials to their uh, fundraiser page and really make it their own. Um, and then we have donations and disbursements as we move through your navigation menu. Um, donations and disbursements is found under reporting. So you can see all the donations that have come in. Um, you can see any recurring gifts that have been set up in the past. Um, you can add offline gifts if you need to. And this is retention where you'll pull the retention report. If you've previously participated in Richland Gives, um, you'll be able to filter your report and show um, who gave last year during the campaign but hasn't given this year, um, which is really just a very cool feature because you are going to want to build into your schedule reaching out to people who have previously given. Um, that is just, to be honest, it is really great low hanging fruit. If they gave before, they are more than likely willing to give again. So you want to make sure you build into your communications reaching out to that batch um, of donors. Um, so then let's see what else uh, disbursements if you need to pull a detailed disbursement report, you can do that as well. It kind of itemizes uh, all of the funds that you raised um, and then. Uh, let's see what else I have funds disbursement so just as a reminder, um, if you are set up for EFT you'll get a twice monthly direct deposit. Um, 
And then if you are not set up for EFT, you will get funds once monthly via check around the 10th of the month for anything that was made in the previous month. Um, again, the retention report, I love to just continue to drive this home. If you previously participated, pull that retention report. It shows you all the stats, so you'll be able to filter by Richland Gives 2022. Um, and then you can see like how many donors, how many donors were retained. It gives you stats uh, that post event, you can also bring that to your board. You can report on your retention, um, stuff like that. Uh, it also pulls the list so that you can download and you can pull all those emails and build it in to either you can send via you know, Gmail or whatever MailChimp, whatever kind of mail application you use. Um, additional settings. So like I said, if you have additional admins that need access this year, if you have you know a financial person who needs access, um, you can add those admins here. Just know that whoever you add as an admin is going to ag have access to donor data. So be thoughtful about who you're adding um, and who needs access to that data. Um, you can also update your legal address. You can set up EFT disbursements, like I said. Um, and under um, general settings, you can also customize uh, your social sharing settings so you can customize what it's going to look like if someone clicks that share to email or share to socials button on your profile. So you can customize by adding hashtags if those are relevant, um, pre-filling text that would display in a social share, um, or adding a picture. Um, additionally, we have some wonderful resources and support available to you. Um, if you haven't already seen it, we have a brand new nonprofit toolkit that we've built. Um, it's very similar, but it has a bunch of new kind of things in it, and the format is a little different too. Uh, but we have your important dates. You can register for the next webinar, September 27th at 2 p.m. Um, and then we go through a bunch of the basics, reviewing kind of settings. Um, AMR has put together some wonderful toolkit assets for you, uh, social media graphics templates. We try to make it uh, as easy as possible for you to get your campaign off the ground. So check out those email, email templates, download them, and then you know tweak them so that they sound like they're coming more from your organization, add your messaging, add your brand colors, things like that. Uh, we also have some example Facebook posts, a news release sample if that's relevant. Uh, so take some time and really dig through those assets. We also have some ebooks that you can download. One is on peer to peer fundraising, um, and I believe that there's also one on matching grants um, so that you can really kind of do a deeper dive into those areas if that's something you want to focus on as a goal for this year's campaign. Uh, and then, of course, review the FAQs. A lot of the information that you know donors might reach out to you about is already answered so make it easy on yourself you don't need to rewrite an answer if there is uh, an faq that has relevant information you can always refer to the faqs when you're trying to answer emails or donor questions or anything like that um, and then of course mighty cause has a wonderful support team available to you monday to friday nine to five Send us an email with any questions that you might have. If you need help getting a peer to peer page set up, if your donor has a question, um, you send us an email. Uh, and then during the event, you also have continued access to our support team. They prioritize Richland Gives tickets, uh, support tickets during the live event. So send over any questions um, and check out the Mighty Cause Support Library. We have pre recorded webinars on so many different topics. Um, so if you want to see a webinar all about matching grants that exists, um, you can do kind of a deep dive into that. Uh, but be, be sure to kind of check it out. The links are added to the uh, nonprofit toolkit. And of course, Richland Gives, their support team is here for you as well. Uh, but yeah, I see a couple questions. We can take those. Uh, let's see the size of the banner and pixels. That's a good question. So I would have to look up the pixel size specifically because the way Mighty Cause um, profiles are set up, it's a responsive page design. 
So if you were to drag the corner of your website into a small browser, kind of small or big, you're going to see that the picture and the banner changes based on device size. Um, so we don't really have, I think we have a ratio instead of pixels specifically. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to look that up real quick. Sarah, when you upload a picture to the banner, it gives you a cropping size on there. So the best yeah. suggestion I have for one of those photos is make sure that it's a, obviously a horizontal photo and um if there's pick if there's people in it you know upload it take a look at it in the live view of your page and see if it works well um it's a tricky thing so i've tried many on our individual page so if you just upload the photo on there and take a look at it it will show you the cropping size mm -hmm. and i think if you were to go to canva as well canva is a free design um website so if you go to canva you can create a banner image by telling them the ratio is i think it's 16 to 9. um so that's kind of like a horizontal shape that mara was just saying um and then you can of course crop based on that if you do need help though reach out to support they can help you kind of troubleshoot getting an image to to work um and then let me see if I can pull up the other question. Um, let's see. Oops, I lost the question. What was it? Can you review the programs feature? Again, I'm not seeing it on my dashboard. Um, yes, so the programs section is not on your dashboard. It's on your organization page. Um, let's see. So at the very bottom of your organization page, you'll see organization data, and there will be a programs tab. Any other questions? Yes, I can show where to register for the webinar. Um, so registering for the webinars um, they are all listed in the nonprofit toolkit so if you go to the richland gives homepage and you click resources there's a drop down menu and it'll say nonprofit toolkit at the very top you can find the important dates um, and that's the quickest way to find it is to just register right in that table um, and that one is all about strategies for success so we'll kind of talk more in depth about the prizes we'll talk more in depth about how to create strategies around them how to use them as talking points in your emails um, how to come up with you know a timeline of communications when to start doing that um, and just we'll always kind of do a focus on matching grants and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising because those are such just crucial parts of building a campaign um, organizations just in general who utilize peer to peer fundraising are going to raise more than those that don't just because you're casting a wider net and you're reaching more people than you would normally be able to without peer to peer fundraising so we'll also chat through um, ways to find people to peer to peer fundraise. Any other questions. Um, well, I'll give it a second in case any others come through, but we are going to download this um, recording and we'll upload it to the toolkit for you all to access um, and to review the slides. Um, be sure to register for our next webinar, September 27th.
Um, and then between now and then, you can start to work on registering if you're not already registered, and then re kind of you know looking at and assessing your organization pages, filling out that to do list, making sure your donation levels and your checkout farm are set, um, kind of doing all of that lift, and then we'll get into strategies. But yeah, Mara, if you have anything else. Uh, there is one other toolkit on the resources, and that's the donor toolkit. So if your donors do have questions, that's under resources as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for taking time to join us for our first webinar this year. Um, we will see you all at the next one. Bye, everyone.